everyone, it's Lisa. Today on Doodle Draw Art, I'm going to show you how to do a layout for a poster project. So I'm going to show you a really effective way to make a really eye-catching and attractive poster that should get you a really good mark on your project. So what you're going to need is poster board for the backdrop, and then you're going to need white paper to uh, print your charts, to draw your pictures, and to do your uh, information writing. And you're only going to write on white paper for this project. You're also going to need some lined paper, and this is not going to be for writing on. This is going to be using, uh, to be used for tracing through so that you can write in straight lines when you are writing words on your white paper. And then it's also a really good idea to have some other paper in contrasting colors from your poster board. Contrasting colors that go in the same theme of the color that you're working with. So since my poster board is red, I chose orange and yellow as complementary colors because in the rainbow we have red, orange, yellow and we could have used some purple or some other colors, but these go nicely. And then I also chose black because black is a really nice heavy anchoring color. So you can just use uh, regular paper that's these colors, or you could even use something like gift wrap if you had some colorful gift wrap around. But mostly you're not gonna see this, it's just gonna frame up the edges of your writing. And so you'll need then a pair of scissors because we're not just going to be putting whole sheets of paper uh, on our poster, although we could, it wouldn't be very eye-catching. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these uh, pieces of paper and we're going to cut them down to the sizes that we need to display our information. You're also going to need some kind of sticky things to keep these stuck on. So glue stick is an awesome option and also so is double-sided tape if you have any of that around your house. Uh, that's a really great thing to use for poster projects. You can use other kinds of glue if you have them and that's all you have, but these would be my preferences here. Then you're also going to need something to make your project colorful. So pencil to do your original work with and an eraser. And then also we'll have a black Sharpie, maybe a fine point Sharpie, and of course uh, my favorite box of crayon markers to do some coloring. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to figure out how many things we need for this project. And I usually recommend um, a small amount of like paragraph writing and a small amount um, of point form writing, and the rest should be very visual, pictures and things. So if you were going to write paragraphs, you might only want to write uh, a paragraph that was this big, because you don't want people to be spending a lot of time trying to read paragraphs on your report. And you could also, um, you could also do a picture that's this size to put somewhere on your report, on your poster. And you could also use uh, a paper that's this size to do some uh, paragraph writing, but it would be nice if there was also a picture here. So this will be sort of, let's say I'm going to have two pictures and a chart um, and a little bit of paragraph writing. And then the rest of my report is going to be some really interesting facts about my topic. So what I've done here is I've cut strips of paper that would only fit a sentence or maybe two sentences, but probably one because I'm going to write fairly large and these would be used to display um, the more you know, the more one sentence blurbs. So you have to decide how many facts you're looking to display about your topic, how many key facts you have. And then so in this case, um, I'm looking for six key facts or I found six key facts about my topic and I've got strips of paper cut out. Um, these are one and a half inches wide and then the backing paper is two inches wide and then I've just got an extra quarter of an inch on each side of these strips. So when you lay them out, what you're going to do is you're going to place all of these things in a visual line so that your eye is drawn from the top down and to the right. Because that's the way we read. We read from left to right on the page. And so we want our project to flow in that direction as well. So what you'll do here, um, I've cut out this big one here. This is half a sheet of paper, and then this one cut smaller again, just um, an inch, a half inch smaller all around, so it centers in. And I'm going to make this uh, the topic or the title of my project. 
and I'll put that across the top. And then what will happen is people will want to start here. So I want something beautiful here to catch their eye, a picture or a map or something. And then as they come down this way, they might read a couple facts and then they'll notice another picture and then they'll read a couple more facts and by then they're getting sort of interested you know they're they're curious about what this topic is that you've presented them and their eye is enjoying the ride down this down this uh down this poster and i like to stagger them a little bit too like let's not just line everything up perfectly let's kind of bring it over sideways like this and then down at the bottom you might then decide you were going to put um a little paragraph somewhere down here for them to read more in-depthly. Um, it could be one of these two spots down here so that they can get all of the final information that you wanted to be sure that, that they left with if they were interested in your topic. So by the time they got down here, if this was a picture, they might want to, to grab these couple of facts as well. So why not lay your whole poster out in sort of um, a downward arrow shape? So what you would have then would be this piece here and then everything sort of coming in and leading you into, oh yes, please do read this little paragraph that I've written to include the really important facts. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now and assemble it together and I'll include uh, my paragraph, but I'm going to show you the style of writing that I feel would be helpful to engage your audience when they're looking at this. So I'm going to go ahead um, and do that now and I may do it, some of it in time lapse because that would be way more fun than watching me do all of this. So here I go. I'm going to start off with my topic. Okay, so now I have all of my information on paper. So I've got all my little facts written on strips of paper and then glued onto colored paper. And I haven't glued anything onto my project yet because now is the time when I can decide exactly how I want to lay this out. Now I think that maybe you can't quite see my whole poster. Is this true? Hmm. Okay, so there's the top. So you can almost see it all, but not quite. So I'll just pull it down a little bit here to work on the top section, and I'll get a picture of it when I'm finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm just... The great thing here is if I had made any mistakes, I made them before I glued them onto this sheet, and I made them before I put them on my poster. So really, at this stage of the game, everything should be super easy to figure out. So all I'm going to do is figure out exactly where I would like all of my information to go. So I had suggested one layout before, but I'm not committed to doing it that way yet. I could easily change my mind and lay this out in a different way. So if I really wanted to, I could put my point form facts down the middle and my information in the corners. I don't like this as much because these facts end up getting sort of overwhelming, like I have to read all six of them. Whoa, six things. Um, so what I would prefer to do would be to group these pictures together. And so I, what I had done was just placed them, starting at the, at the top here, a bigger picture. And then I have another bigger picture, which I could place right beside it like this. Or now since I don't have anything in this bottom corner, there's not one reason why I couldn't place this directly over the top of this other one. And in fact, there isn't even one reason why I couldn't cut this because there's nothing in this corner. I just want to make sure that my layout stays consistent. So I would also want to trim off this edge of the white paper so that it is leaving an edge available of yellow. So I can put these two pictures together here in the corner and glue them down. I'm not going to glue anything yet. I'm still deciding. 
and then i can decide what order i want my facts to be on here. so if my most important fact is where it happens i might start off with that um and then i might want to say how often that it happens and i might want to give on a recent fact about that and i might want to say that something really amazing was discovered. now you'll notice i also used marker to write those really interesting words so that people don't have to read the whole sentence if they want to know it happens in this country this many times this interesting thing and some amazing thing all happened then they just have to read the brightly colored words um and then also down here i've got a chart which shows information about whatever information you were trying to uh, get out but charts or bar graphs or pie charts those are really interesting and informative and quick to read so people don't have to spend a lot of time reading sentences if they wanted to read sentences they would want to read a full report like a report project not just a uh, poster project and that's the other thing too you don't have to center your topic title at the top you could offset it a bit to the side and you'll know once you start to um play this out how you'd like it to go so then here was my really heavy informative paragraph but you'll notice that i made topic bold and a few blah blah blahs are bold and the super amazing fact and a few more facts are bold this information is all different information than i have out here so this is a further explanation of something important about my topic so i would sit that here perhaps and then um i was thinking that i would put these guys um, coming over in this direction here. So I'm sort of sticking with my original idea of how to lay this out. And I do like leaving a fair bit of blank space on a poster project because this will help our audience feel as though they were not overwhelmed with the project. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to this now. And I'm just putting glue stick on the backs of each of these and gluing them on. But the great thing about doing this before you stick it to anything is that if you're making a mistake, if you don't quite get your, um, if you spelled something wrong or you ran out of room on your page, you can easily uh, fix that before it's too late because we're only gluing it now and we know it's all right and we know it's beautiful and we're so happy with it that we're just going to commit to it now. And again, I have no problem whatsoever with overlap. So just because these are individual things doesn't mean that they don't need to, um, that they need to be completely untouching on here. So this piece here, because maybe it has to do with this number, I'm going to actually let these two things uh, overlap each other just like that. Because that will also help draw my uh, viewer around the entire project. All right, so I'm just going to finish gluing this down, and then we'll have a look at the whole thing. I'll hold it up for you. All right, so when you're finished, uh, you might want to go around and just ensure that you have enough glue underneath all of your corners. So what you could do is just... Uh, grab a little bit of glue and just rub it like this underneath the edges. So all I'm doing is putting the glue on here and then putting this underneath, pressing on it a little bit, and then the glue will get on the back of the thing I'm trying to glue in place. So this is the side. I've got my finger on the clean side, and that's got glue on it. And I'm just going to tuck it behind here and pull, and then it will stick there. You can do it a couple times because it's not getting too much glue just enough to be sticky. So yeah, if you need to fix your corners, that's a really good way to do it without bolt folding your paper over and getting um, wrinkles in it. So that can help. And so that's my project. I hope this is helpful for you. I know so many of you become really great artists and you would probably want to get really good marks on your poster projects. So this is how I recommend doing it. So I want to hear your feedback. Tell me how, how did you um, make out with your poster project? Did you use my ideas? Have you got some new ideas of your own? Tell me what your projects are about. I know it's project season. Teachers are giving lots of projects now. So why don't you post in the comments what kind of projects are you doing? Are you doing a dinosaur project or volcano project or uh, some kind of science fair project? Because this type of layout can work for any project like those. 
and uh, yeah, let me know. Give me some comments. Please be sure to like this video if you liked watching it, and subscribe to my channel for more Doodle Draw art. Thanks for watching.